Right guys, this is going to be my second prestige solo for the week. This time it's going to be on the um, Warlock. For those that are just interested in the run, then just skip to the time on the screen. For everyone else, uh, I'll discuss my modifiers, weapons, everything else. Uh, I can't show you the strike specific loot. Just look up the Braytek Osprey if you're interested in it. Uh, that's what you're farming for, which it's well worth the farm. Um, for those that aren't interested in collecting things though, Curtain Call is going to do a job, if not better job. Because it has a higher rate of fire, which is very important for DPS. It has higher velocity uh, than the Osprey, I think. Yes, it does. Um, but what the Osprey does uh, is it is a happy medium. So Curtain Call is this high rate of fire, high velocity rocket launcher. That, uh, then you have Sins of the Past which is this slow handling, slow velocity but high blast radius rocket launcher which is better on major majors and ads and stuff whereas current calls better for boss damage Osprey is the balancing between the two so I really want the gun uh, I really want the rocket launcher because I, I just want to try it for myself I haven't got it yet so that's basically what it is it, it's a mix between, it's a hybrid between current call and sins and I like that, uh, and I definitely want to get it myself. So, uh, like I said, I can't show the strike specific loop, but here's the modifiers first. So things will make sense from here on. Zero power handicap. We're doing arc singe and heavyweight, so we're adding two multipliers to the game. Um, as for our negatives, we're going with momentum, which, as it says, uh, regeneration is disabled while you're motionless. So if you're standing still, you're not going to get anything. Momentum procs after so long when you start running. It doesn't proc instantly, uh, but it does proc after s once you start running. Uh, you need to start getting used to momentum and its playstyle because it comes in so good for Nightfall Solos. I, I'm recommending it for nearly everyone now. So you, if you think, oh, it's too hard, you need to get used to momentum. But if, you, if you've never played it and then you put it on, you, you, it's not going to go down well. You need to practice with it. So definitely start playing with it. The sooner the better. Uh, I combo this with attrition. So I'm messing around in this run. So basically uh, I found out that you can compare these two. Uh, and momentum cancels out attrition. Because attrition is doing the similar thing. Uh, only that you can't move around to get your health. But momentum's there for that. So it's kind of cool that you compare these two together. Because what it says for attrition is regeneration is greatly impaired. So I am, I think it's just uh, 2 HP. And it looks that way to me. Uh, it just, I don't think it affects anything else. Um, so health regen is greatly impaired. I don't think it's... It just says regeneration. So I don't think it's linked to super grenade melee. Somebody knows any different? Then tell me that. I don't think so though. But what I like about it is, you, it says here, defeating enemies may create wells of light, which increases super energy and HP. Okay, so I don't know if it increases grenade energy and all of that, but I know it increases super energy and definitely HP. So effectively, this is like having a slower momentum on, because momentum still works in the regular way, just a little slower. Just It's just a little slower... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say for these strats, you don't have to put attrition on. But if you want to screw around with it, you can. Just I happen to have it on for this run. I find it interesting these two work together like that. You'll see better in the run. Okay. So uh, we'll do weapons first. So we're going to go Devils, Mananen. Okay. So I always run explosive rounds for solos. Rampage weapons are worth a mention. And if you like Rampage weapons, then use them. Uh, I just still value explosive rounds still. As for our heavy, we're going to be using the Warcliffe Coil. Um, I don't know what it is, but when it's with a Rift, it's just, it's just so good. With an Empower Rift, it's that, it's that increased range. I wish I had the Masterworks for this also, which I don't. So th th just to confirm to you, because you'll see it does really well. If anyone does have the Masterwork for this, 
definitely definitely be choosing this in your solos because as increased tracking when you have that on but you definitely don't need it as you'll see from the video okay so for armor none of the armor counts you don't need to matter about that as long as you are above 360 light you can solo this uh you can solo it below but recommended 360 um exotics we go learn a faction boot so we get automatic reloads of course we're going to run that and for our subclass we go stormcaller stormcaller is actually really really good um which is surprises me. So we go Pulsnade, um, best Stormcaller exotic, I think. Ex exotic grenade. So we go Pulse grenade and Power and Rift for our thirty percent increase weapon damage. Just an effect abilities, and we go Bottom Tree. In my opinion, Bottom Tree is better. So let's look at what Top Tree has. Top Tree has uh, an excellent perk going for it, Arc Web. So your grenade change chains around. It just makes it that it's a wider radius. Um, but seeing as though like we're not doing a grenade here, nightfall, or you know, if torrent was on back in the days, then yeah, you go on arc web because you're using your nade all the time. But torrent is no longer in the game. Uh, grenade here is though, but I'm not doing a uh, that sort of nightfall. So that's out the window. Ionic blink. It's a PVP perk in my eyes. Um, although it is good for avoiding enemy fire. It wastes too much server energy though. Uh, chain lightning. I mean, whoop de do. Chains to another add. The, the melee isn't that strong anyways on the storm, so this perk I don't value too much either. Transcendence, transcendence I do. Um, but the problem is I'm using my abilities so much that I have to keep my abilities for this to be great. Uh, so, yeah. I prefer bottom tree because I like the rising storm. So when you get a melee um, hit, it doesn't say kill, it just says hit. When you get a melee hit, it charges your super grenade and melee energy. I like that. Okay, really like that. Uh, I love Arc Soul as always. Uh, and Arc Soul is affected by the Arc Singe multiplier. So Arc Singe, <laughs> uh, sorry, Arc Soul, it, does, it really helps out actually, you'll see. Uh, this is team player, so this isn't affected by solo, but it is actually a good perk. Landfall, an amazing solo perk. Um, seeing as though the Stormcaller Super isn't strong on major damage, it's great on trash mobs, but on major damage, this helps it out, because it helps to blind an enemy. Um, so you, you can blind them just like a, a smoke nade would, or a blind and melee. Uh, it, it, it disorientates the enemy, okay? Um, and then it's leaving you three to do damage to that major target. So I, I really value bottom tree and I advise that you pick it. Okay, so that's the modifiers and everything. It's on with the uh, storm collar run. Uh, so straight away you can spawn your sparrow up and sparrow through this so you get through a little quicker. And sparrow through until you get to ads. You can sparrow past the ads. Just a risky strat. If you want to try it, try it, but it's risky whether you get through or not. Uh, now momentum's gonna help out. It's gonna have your health regen all the time. So making this super easy just to run past. You don't need to kill any of these ads here. Now this is not a speedrun, I recognise I could probably do a speedrun on this in probably 10 minutes but this is more of a guide video, it's more of a how do you, how does the player get the milestone done? So for that bit there, I done a pulse nade and one coil, takes out the whole bunch. See so I get the wells of light there, so I'm getting the increased super energy. I'll do a rift round uh, just on this corner. Be careful if you get sniped, like I'm pretty weak but I know I'm, I can stay alive there. I had a well of light behind me. I really like this combination of momentum and attrition. Uh, the only thing you need to get used to is if you've already played with momentum is that the momentum is going to be a bit slower. Now I run up halfway the map, it spawns in the rotation of ads. Now if you have shielded knights, this is bad. If you have curse for all, this is good. If you do have shielded knights, um, it is going to make this strat maybe uh, slightly different um, but overall it's still similar 
and it's for one room coming up. Um, but if you have Curse for All, you get Shriekers later on in the fight. If you have Shielded Knight, you get Ogres later on in the fight. Okay, so once all that's are killed, we're just running around getting our momentum and trying to kill a knight. Uh, you've got to be real careful not to coil yourself. Um, and also try and be tactical when you do coil. You know, make sure you've got fullish health. And try and do it, you know, when the knight's not shooting at you too much. Because it is Arc Singe and the knights are dangerous. Make sure you're leaving with five coil here. It's not essential, but get into the habit of doing so. Trying to have, trying to optimize your heavy. Okay, so with this bit you can skip these ads. I would wait a second or two here and then run round. Watching the curse for all caught me, but it's random whether they do or they don't, but as you see in there, momentum still grabs me through. See how slow it is? That's what happens when you have attrition on, but it still regens. So it's still... It's still good because you're getting your super more often, I, I think. I think by the looks of this. Okay, so with this, I'm going to do a pulse nade and try and kill as many as you can with the knights. And you can super. If you're good on that, you want to get a coil reloaded. And try and find the right time to coil this witch because one coil will take the witch down 80 to 90 percent. Just you got to be careful. When, a, when approaching, so I know when to time so the witch starts shooting and they'll stop for so long just like that, I can coil run round, pick up another break and I'm good to go okay so I do know that you have to kill a certain amount of acolytes to spawn in the next set of throw um, so I just start focusing them remember this, this is not me speedrunning it, this is you know just the average completion here. So we run up, we take one more coil on the uh, wizard. We can finish off the remaining acolyte. It also helps out a little because uh, we can start working on our super, uh, which is good to have for the next room coming up. It is required that you kill all night, so if there's still one night le left alive, the for all one spawning until so. Now I don't have full heavy here, um, which was a brick there, I never noticed actually now looking at it. You can come to this uh, rock here, let them crowd up, you can do a pulse nade, and not only that, you're getting plenty of super energy. May as well, it just takes a couple of seconds. Plays into the strat as well. So uh, this room we can skip as well with momentum. But even with attrition on, if you are running with momentum at full health, you're still going to be good, look. Well, like I said, attrition doesn't need to go on. Uh, you could certainly just have momentum on by itself. Okay, so with this auger room, this is probably the technic... Uh, this is technical. This is the hardest part of the whole nightfall on this one. But I've got some strats to make it easier. Yeah. So what you want to focus on is not the Shrieker, nothing uh, but all Acolytes. There is three major Acolytes in middle. You want to kill these Acolytes just because they can screw up the strat. It's not essential to do but it's a safety precaution because if you're sitting somewhere, stand somewhere and you want to spawn kill knights, it's all the nades going on you, you don't want it. So it's, it's worth to take the time just to kill all these um, acolytes. Just be careful on the ogre, be safe. You know, position yourself like I am and you're good. Make sure you got full health now and we're going to spawn kill these knights. So we come to here, make sure you got momentum there. Uh, do an empower and rift. Spawn kill the shrieker, spawn kill the first knight. And you've got to time your coil exactly as soon as. And then you're good, then you'll have one more acolyte, don't call yourself. You're good to go. That's an uh, easy way. Spawn kill um, the first phase. So there's four knights. Uh, two knights on each phase, so that's the first phase done. T 
take out one crystal and bring this crystal over to where I go. This is important. You don't want to take a crystal out right now while you're on the base because um, that will then spawn up the Shrieker. So we have another Shrieker to kill. And we don't want that. Now you could right now wait for an Empowering Rift and then spawn kill the next two nights. I just didn't want to wait 30 seconds in my run. So I just ended up taking the crystal. Which made this a little harder for me. So I do a pulse nade on the Shrieker. You get back to cover. Watch Yoga. Once the Shrieker dies, you're going to have one knight spawn immediately. Then the second knight will spawn. It'll take a long time, but you should super if you're low in health. Get some damage in, and then you want to kill these two snipers. That uh, makes this room easier now. You don't have to worry about these, these snipers. Now you can run down here, and you should be okay with momentum. And then you come back here. Now, if I did if I did wait for Empower and Rift, I could have spawn killed both knights. No problem. That's why I'm saying, I'm advising, just wait for your Rift, and then you wouldn't have to do what I'm doing right now. I just didn't want to wait in the video for that long. 30 seconds. Well, as you can see, even if you screw up, you know, you can just come round, and you're good to go to, um, use coil a coil a well good like a a good shot coil in the right distance you gotta remember you know it, it's it's damage goes by distance so if you're way far off it's not going to do that much damage if you're too close you're going to kill yourself so yeah what they will one shot the knight okay so now we've left this last crystal up i advise you leave this one up also it's a good one to leave up because we're positioning ourselves to kill the ogre. Now you want to do grenade first, and then a coil each. Do one coil, get into cover, and then another coil. That will kill your ogre. Now all other ads will despawn after so long, and then just pick up uh, all heavy. Uh, now I'm going to advise it's not essential, but you again leave this room with five coil. You you should be able to. I use Scott. I spam my coil there and I still have bricks on the floor and I have five. So you shouldn't be struggling for coil. You should leave this room with five, definitely. Okay, so we're approaching the boss. This is going to be the easiest um, solo kill on Nokris. It's a two phase solo. Uh, you, you only have to deal with technically one phase of the fight, really. Technically one to two phases of the fight. So what I'm trying to do now. Uh, is group the knights up because all the arc shields will explode on each other. So they grouped up nice, one coil, nearly kills all three. So now I wait for them to group up again because they I know the AI, they're gonna go up top. And I do another coil. The thing is with it, if you're weak, you need to quickly get your health because the boss is gonna spawn up. Make sure your coil's reloaded. Doing empower and rift, and straight away you want to do three coil. For damage, I slowed it down. It's actually two and a half coil. The two and a half coil with an arc soul rift, power and rift, will get this boss half health, or maybe below. It's something around there. I say two and a half because half of the coil was immune for me. So we're talking split seconds. So that you need to be really quick on the third one. If you're not quick enough uh, with your spamming of the coil, you might get the third coil fully immune. If you do, it's going to be harder to two-phase this boss then. Okay, so now we deal with the proper uh, proper first phase of the fight. So yeah, we're only really dealing with one phase of this fight. Yep. So uh, we're just kind of taking out all ads. We just take everything out basically from the right side. Left left side knight always spawns up before right side, so I'm on right side, so I'm safe. Safe from that. But the right side, is, as we speak, is just spawned in. Okay, so I end up using landfall. This is where landfall comes in, as you can see there. Uh, the damage is poor, but getting landfall in ensures that the Burma knight's not hitting me while I'm in my super, which. You're not really tanky in a Stormcaller super, you know? 
So if you can blind a knight like that and then super him, saving on your coil. But you could have just coiled him anyways if you had enough tricks. I guess I did, but that's just showing you a little technique with landfall, to be honest. Okay, so now we want to kill all acolytes because we don't want to be sniped on this next phase. So for this strat, I'm going to say all adds need to be killed. You can't have adds up. Um, after the two crystals have been taken down. Another thing I should mention is you see that I have a ball on the floor. Sometimes the balls will despawn if they are on the floor for too long. I don't know the timing on this, but it has happened to me and it is annoying. So if there's a ball on the floor and it's safe, go ahead and pick it up. As long as you've still got one crystal left up, the boss will stay immune and won't start the next phase. Which is good. That means you can control when the next phase happens. I have plenty of coil, you need to make you have three coil minimum for this. I think if you shoot more than three, the boss is going to be immune anyway. So, come to this location, you want to do an empower and reef first. Okay. Then you pick up the ball, take down the last crystal, equip the coil, and spam coil. Spam it as soon as you can. Another thing to notice, I did not nade on any of any damage. Do not do, not do any grenades. I've done some testing on this. And, and a pulse grenade will screw it up. The important thing is that we have heavy weight on and coil. The coil is doing you damage. A pulse grenade is just going to screw up uh, the timing. You need to ensure that you're effectively getting three shots off on each phase. And you will two phase this boss solo, no problem. I think, in my opinion, this is the easiest strat way to go so far that I've found. So. Um, yeah, so that was the Stormcaller solo. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.